Well, I have a good one today. And it's a, it's a story of Jotham and Samson. And the first part is titled, King of the Trees. Did you ever think of king, a tree having a king? Well, truly Jesus is king of everything. And would be king of the trees too. But anyways, if you and I were walking on a hot summer day, I'm sure each of us would choose the shady side of the street to walk on where there's plenty of big trees growing. There are so many, many kinds of trees. And there are tall ones which reach up and punch holes in the clouds and see even short ones which make us stoop to walk under them. There are some trees whose branches hug tightly through another or to the mother trunk and others which spread out their boughs and shake their leaves trying to tell people to come and rest under their pleasant shade. Some trees grow tired and sleepy and little fol folks are only awake in the summertime while others keep on their, their dresses of green needles all the year round like our Christmas tree. That confused me for just a second, but the trees that hit their leaves uh, they keep their, their dress on or their leaves on during the summertime uh, and then they fall away in the, in the fall. But then our uh, evergreens, like our Christmas trees, keep their green all year long. Now if I should tell you that once trees wanted a king, I know all of you would, would uh, at once maybe show, we know the king of trees, it is the Christmas tree. Now I hadn't thought of that. I suppose that's a good point. You have all guessed wrong though. When the tree, when the trees chose a king, there never had been a Christmas day nor a Christmas tree. Because this was back in the Old Testament times before the birth of Jesus. You remember Brave Gideon that was that I've read to you about a few times? And how he saved the Hebrews from the Midianites? The people afterward asked Gideon to be their king, but he was he did not want to wear a crown. God is your king, Gideon told them, and it's true. And when Gideon died, the people were determined to have a king, and so they elected Abimelech, his, uh, Gideon's son, who was a wicked man. Jotham, another son, good like his father, but not so brave, had to run away and hide because the people tried to kill him. But before he hid himself, Jotham told the people and his brother Abimelech a story about the trees choosing a king. And here is that story. The trees wanted a king and went to the olive tree and asked it to reign over them. And the olive tree and the olive tree was not a bit pleased by the request. Its rich oil and good fruit, which everyone wants, which everyone enjoyed, were much better than being a king. Why should I give up all of my fatness whereby I give pleasure to people just to move my branches over a lot of trees? The olive asked. Now, although the beautiful olive had refused to be their king, the tree was not discouraged. The trees were not discouraged. The fig tree, perhaps what would like to be king, but again, the trees were mistaken. The fig, the fig tree would not listen to them. It's delicious. Um, it's delicious fruit fed many, many hungry people. And how would we live today without Fig Newton cookies? <laughs> and giving uh, food to the hungry folks was very much better than just waving its branches over a whole forest of trees. Now, the trees were having a hard time finding a king. No tree that was useful or good for anything wanted to be king. Um, so, they asked, let us ask the vine, they all said, and off to the vine they went and offered it a royal crown. And think of it, the beautiful vine bearing luscious grapes from which came sparkling wine. And every Hebrew loved the vine and wanted one of his own. The useful vine scorned being made king as had the fig and the olive. Now they're not having much, much uh, good fortune at finding a king for the trees, are they? But finally, the only one left for the trees to ask to be king was ugly, prickly bramble. And they were foolish enough to choose it. Of course, the good-for-nothing bramble gladly accepted and became king of trees. But fire will come out of the bramble and destroy you, Jotham added when he finished his story. Then down the mountainside he ran to, to a place of safety where neither his wicked brother Abimelech nor the foolish Hebrews could reach him. What a strange story for a man to tell big grown-ups, isn't it? Little children would not be surprised to hear that the trees wanted a king of their own. But big folks know better. Why didn't Jotham tell the pretty parable to the little folks instead? 
because he wanted to teach the Hebrews a lesson. He wanted to show them that they were exactly like the foolish trees when they chose his wicked brother Abimelech for their king. Good Gideon, like the fig tree, had refused to be king. Now tell me, all of you, who was the bramble? Well, yes, you are right. It was the wicked Abimelech, and wickedness, like a destructive fire, did come out from him and destroy the foolish Hebrew people who had made him king. Now, I have a second story for you, and this one is called Samson the Sun Man. And here's what Samson looked like, or was supposed, allegedly looked like in the Bible. So, let's read Samson the Sun Man. Suppose you and I went uh, walking and looked in the shop windows. What would you most want to see? Well, those wonderful walking and talking dolls and those fine fire wagons with their shiny gongs. We would stop and pick out the prettiest doll and the biggest fire wagon for our very own. Suppose a big man should come along the street while you and I were looking in the shop windows. What would you think if he, if he should reach out his hand, pick up all the great buildings, shop and all, and throw it across his shoulders. Well, I think he was pretty darn strong. But then suppose he should march off with it as though it were no heavier than a sack of popcorn. I think your eyes would almost pop out of your head. You would be so astonished, and so would I. There once was a man named Samson, and some people called him Little Son because he was so strong. And he did very wonderful things, things just as uh, strange as picking up a big store and walking off with it. He never was afraid of anything because nothing was as strong as he was. If he were walking in a lonely road and met a hungry lion, do you think that he would run away? Of course not. Once a savage lion did jump at him, and Samson's strong hands took hold of the wild beast as though it were only a chicken, and tore it apart. People were afraid of this strong man. I, you know, I can understand that. Uh, you wouldn't want to offend him, I'm sure. It was foolish of them, for Samson did not mean to hurt anyone. He liked to have people see how strong he was, and that was all. If people had treated him kindly, he never would have hurt them. But they were not very kind. They were cruel. And sometimes when he visited people, they bound his hands and arms with very heavy ropes. It did no good, though. Samson snapped the rope as though it was only a piece of, of, of thread. One day, Samson went into the large city in, called Gaza, and it had high, strong walls, and it, was, it had thick, heavy gates or doors. And in the walls, every night, these gates were shut and bolted, just as we all shut and lock our doors, the doors of our houses at night. Our cities, yours and mine, don't have walls around them. The gates of walled cities were large and strong, and some of the gates were so heavy that it took more than 10 men to open one gate. Now the people who lived in Gaza were sure that their villa walls, or that their walls were, were so high and their gates so strong that Samson would never be able to get out of their city. They wanted to keep him there. But he played a great joke on them. One night when the people were all asleep and when even the dogs had stopped barking and crawled into their kennels, Samson went down to the city's gate and he did not want to stay any longer in Gaza. He wanted to get out of there. But the gates were locked. What was he to do? A heavy iron bar was across him. Anyone but Samson would have had to wait until morning before he could get out. But not Samson. He put his hands under the great gates, lifted them from their big hinges, and flung them across his shoulders. Pretty awesome, I would say. Then off he started and carried them to the top of a high hill. A hill, excuse me. When the city people awoke in the morning, their gates were gone, and so was Samson. How the oxen must have pulled him, and the men shouted when the heavy gates were dragged down the hill and set up in the wall once again. Everyone tried to find out what made Samson so strong. A woman named Delilah said she would find out, and she did. Samson foolishly told her that he was strong because he had long hair. One night, when he was asleep, Delilah cut off his hair. Poor Samson, as soon as his hair was gone, he was, he was weak, so weak that people were able to lock him up in prison. You, you and I know that if we have our hair cut off, it'll grow back again. Well, mine's getting a little 
thin on top and not growing back like it used to, but that's another story. <laughs> well, Samson's, uh, you know, and I know that our hair will go back again if it's cut off. Samson's did. That sil the silly people never thought of that, that it would grow back and that he would probably be strong again. Now, as Samson's hair grew long again, he began to be strong, and these wicked people treated him cruelly. They invited him to their feasts, but gave him nothing to eat. They only laughed at him and made fun of him. One day, the Philistines had a great feast in the temple of their fish god, Dagon, and they brought Samson in to amuse themselves. They placed him between the pillars of the temple, probably the strong columns which held up the roof. Let me feel the pillars upon which the house rests, he said to the, to the boy who, had, who held his hand. And grasping the two middle pillars, he gave them a mighty pull, and down he bowed with all his might as he, as he held the pillars. Crack, crash, in fell the roof and the temple walls, bearing Samson and his tormentor in the ruins. So, he was a strong man. But he was he was abused by the people around him, especially when he didn't have strength. They were silly enough to think that his hair wouldn't grow back, or that if it did, it, he still wouldn't have strength. Well, as I said, both of these stories are from the Old Testament, and they're wonderful stories, and they each and every one have a lesson for us. Now, next time we get together, I want to tell you a stories about Saul and David, King Saul, and David, a young shepherd boy who eventually became the king of Israel. I hope you have an awesome, awesome day, and I love you all very much. God bless you. Stay well, and God willing, I'll see you again real, real soon.